So here's the first way I'm going to find the distance of a point to a line. Now I'm not going to go over the meanings of the various forms of the equations of lines, I'll just assume you know that, previous videos. Here I've got it in symmetric form. It's the technique that I want to go through here. So the first technique is going to be this. If you've got a line, and here's a line, lying in two-dimensional space just now if you like, and there's a point sitting off that. If I wanted the distance of that point to that line, I would take a set square, I would slide it along the line until it hit the point, and then that would be the shortest distance, the distance defined to be the distance between the point and the line. However, this line isn't lying on a flat surface, it's lying in space, and a distance at right angle to it doesn't necessarily need to go in any particular direction. It could sweep out, well, for that point, that point would sweep out a circle, or in general, this line would sweep out a plane perpendicular to the line. So that's the technique I'm going to use. I'm going to take a plane that's perpendicular to this line, slide it along the line until it reaches that point. At which, case, at which point, the distance that I require will be the distance between the point and the intersection of the plane with the line. So here's the plane, I'll call that the plane pi. Here's the point, and here's the intersection of the plane with the line, I'll call that p dashed. The distance that I want will be the distance p p dashed. So the first step will be get the equation of the plane. Well, to get the equation of a plane you need a point on it, and I've got that, the point p, and the direction perpendicular to it, and normal to the plane, well that'll be the line. And you should know that in the symmetric form, the three numbers, the three numbers forming the denominators, are the components of its direction vector. So for this line I can say its direction vector is going to be 3, 1, 1. Which means that, as far as the plane pi is concerned, its normal vector will also be 3, 1, 1. Or any multiple of it. But that's the best you can get with the smallest, most positive numbers. There's no point going in for roots by trying to use the unit vector, for instance. Anyway, if that's the normal to the plane, and the point p lies on the plane, I can establish its equation quite quickly, because n dot, any point in the plane, will be n dot, where dot of course means the scalar product, any particular point in the plane I happen to know, and I know the point p. Which simply means, whoops, uh, daisy, 3, 1, 1 dot any point will be 3, 1, 1 dot any particular point. Multiplying that out, scale the product, multiply the corresponding components, add them up. 3x plus a y plus a z will be negative 18 plus 1 plus 21, which is 4. So there's the equation of the plane. Next step will be, what's the intersection of the line with the plane? In other words, the point P dash. I want the intersection of the line with the plane. Well, for that, I'm going to do a substitution. I'll substitute for the X, the Y and the Z of various points, of the points in the plane and the points in the line. For that, I'll want this in a slightly different form. I want to change the equation of the line into its parametric form. Remember, if those things are all equal, they're all equal to some number, some number t being the parameter. So rearranging it, I would have x equals 3t minus 4, y equals t minus 5, and z equals t, because it's just 1 times it, minus 1. I'm going to substitute that in pi. I'm going to substitute that in pi so that... The equation of the plane will now read 3 times x, which is this thing, 3t minus 4, plus just y, so just the t minus 5, plus just the z, so it's the t minus 1, and that lot should come to 4. Tidying that up. 9t minus 12 plus t minus 5 plus t minus 1 equals 4. That then would be 9, 10, 11t minus 18 equals 4, so 11t is 22, so t is 2. So that identifies the point in the line then. The point in the line I want is the point with parameter 2. So I'll just put this down over here. So for p dash, I've got p dash is going to be the point 3 times 2 take away 4, 
y is going to be just the 2, take away 5, just putting brackets around the parameter just to indicate it, and z is going to be 2, take away 1, which means p dashed is going to be the point 2, negative 3, 1. Now that you know p and p dashed, you can work out the distance you require, that's the length of p, p dashed, just by taking the components of the vector p, p dashed. I'd rather do that compared to Pythagoras because with the components of the vector, if there are any, happen to be any multiples, I can just pull them out of it. And that will then give me the length of that vector, will then give me the distance. I'll need to clear this space. So, p, p dashed. P, p dashed will be, just taking its components then from these two here, it's going to be 2 take away negative 6. I'll just write it down. 2 take away negative 6. Negative 3 take away 1 and 1 take away 21. So pp dashed is going to be 8, negative 4, negative 20. Or better than that, taking out a 4, it's going to be 4 times 2, negative 1, negative 5. Which means the distance that I want, the distance of the point to the line, the distance will be the length of the vector, which will be 4 times the length of this vector here, which will just be the squaring those parts, I'll just square them directly. So 4 plus 1 plus 25, which is 4 root 30. The distance of that point to that line, or rather the shortest distance of that point to that line, is 4 root 30. Now the second of the ways. Now this time I'm not going to get an accurate right angle here. I'm just going to pick some particular point here as a potential projection of the point onto the line. It is the right angle distance that I do want, the perpendicular distance. But if I just pick any particular point and take that vector, which may not be at right angles, so that will not be necessarily the shortest distance. If I just do that to begin with, I'd have this. I'd have p, p dashed equals. Now I need an expression for a point on this line. Well, here's the equation, the line is symmetric form. If I rearrange that into its parametric form, I can get an expression for that point. Maybe I'll just write that down here then. So this point, any point on this line, would have a form of its x-coordinate would be 3t minus 4. Its y-coordinate would be t minus 5. Oops. And its z-coordinate would be 1 times t take away 1 would be t minus 1. So that for the line pp dashed, for that vector, I would have this then. I would have 3t minus 4 take away negative 6, t minus 5 minus 1, and t minus 1 take away 21. Simplifying that then, this gives me an expression for this vector p, p dashed. So that would be 3t plus 2t minus 6 and t minus 22. That gives me the components of the vector p, p dashed in terms of the parameter t locating the point p dashed, which could of course be anywhere. And the trick here is going to be this. I don't want that to be anywhere. I want that to lie in the line such that I've got a right angle. I want the line P, P dashed to be perpendicular to L. And P, P dashed perpendicular to L means that P, P dashed I should really have been putting that down. P, P dashed dot U in other words, the scalar product of that vector and the direction vector of the line must come to zero. So that means that 3t plus 2, t minus 6 and t minus 22 dot, and then the direction vector of that line is given by these denominators, which is 3, 1, 1. That scalar product should come to zero, which will give me an equation that will give me t. So I'll multiply that out then, so I've got 3 times that. 9t plus 6, 1 times this, plus t minus 6, 1 times that, plus t minus 22 equals zero. Adding it up, 9, 10, 11. 11t, they disappear, minus 22 equals zero. 11t equals 22, t equals 2. 
Now, a significant improvement here is that I'm not now going to use the parameter to locate the point in the line because I've already got an expression for the vector. So I can go directly without even working out what p dashed is. I can go directly to the vector p, p dashed, which is what I really wanted. So that I have, I'll have to put it down here. P, p dashed is going to be substituting 2 into this expression. So it's going to be 3 times 2 plus 2, 2 minus 6, and 2 minus 22, simply putting brackets to indicate that parameter there, wasn't really necessary, which gives me 8, negative 4, negative 20, or as before, better still, 4 times 2, negative 1, negative 5. And similarly, as before, the distance then, when it is a right angle, the distance is going to be the length of PP dashed, been a bit lazy there, which will be 4 times the length of this vector, which as before will just be using the squares directly, plus 1 plus 25, the distance once more is 4 root 30. So that was using the scalar product then. Now for the third way, if you're still awake. This time I'm going to find the distance of that point to the line without even considering a projection of that point on the line in terms of finding its vector or finding a point in the line. In this case, I'm going to use the vector product. Quick reminder of the vector product. If you have two vectors with some angle between them, the vector product A cross B is of another vector perpendicular to them both following the right hand rule, so that would be pointing up the way. But that's not the important point here. The significant point is the magnitude of the vector product is equal to the length of A times the length of B times the sine of the angle in between them. And geometrically what that stands for is the area of the parallelogram bounded by the vectors A and B. Get rid of this bit. So for this line, I know the point P, and if you remember from this part here, I know a point on the line, that's the top part. Remember the equation of the line in that form is x minus a, y minus b, z minus c, over the x component, the y component, and the z component of the direction vector. And a, b, and c is a starting point in the line. So I know a point in this line straight away from its equation. I've got a point here, which I could just call A, which is negative 4, negative 5, negative 1. Then I can say this. Since I know P and I know the point on the line, if I form the vector AP and I know the direction vector of the line, I'll just put that in here for whatever length it goes on for, I know the direction vector of the line, then I can get the area of this parallelogram formed by them. The area of that parallelogram will be the magnitude of the vector product. The area of the parallelogram is going to be the magnitude of AP cross U to get the distance the shortest distance to the line, do you think of what's the other way of working out the area of a parallelogram? It's base times height. The base would be the length of the vector u, and the height would be the required distance. The height of this parallelogram is this perpendicular distance. So that's also equal to, I could put down base times height, where the base is the length of the vector u, and the height is the distance that I want. So I could rearrange that then. So the distance I want is going to be the magnitude of the vector product divided by the magnitude of the vector u. Well, it's just a case of finding those parts. Well, the vector product, first of all. Well, what is the vector AP? I'll put that down first of all. AP is going to be P minus A. So it's going to be negative 6 take away negative 4. 1 take away negative 5, and 21 take away negative 1. Or you could just say, how do you get from negative 4 to negative 6? In which case you're saying you're going to say you go back 2. How do you get from negative 5 to 1? You go forward 6. 
how do you get from negative 1 to 21? You go forward 22. You could have sort of stated that directly. So AP is this. U, of course, just comes straight from those denominators. It's 3, 1, 1. It's a bit spaced out there. Just do that here first of all. So AP cross U is going to be, using the determinant form of it, I, J, K. And then we've got AP is negative 2, 6, 22. U is 3, 1, 1. Which means I'll have I minus J plus K. 6 take away 22. For J, it's going to be negative 2 take away 66. And for K, it's going to be negative 2 take away 18. Lots of negatives here. So that's going to give me negative 16i, negative 68, so plus 68j, minus 20k. So that would equal, you can take 4 out anyway from this, 4 times negative 4, 17, whoop, 5. No, you've missed the negative. That's negative 5. Luckily, that doesn't affect the magnitude, Tom Shea. Oh, thank you, Professor Porridge. And then just going over here then, so I've got D is equal to the magnitude, which will be 4 times, and then just go straight into the squares, 16 plus 289 plus 25, over U, which is the, what oh, lost it again, square root of, 9 plus 1 plus 1, so that gives me 4 times the square root over, and that part's 11, so that's 41, 330, very handy, 11 cancels out that down to 30, so once again the distance is 4 root 30.